He's the first Filipino to ever win a world crown in any athletic competition. And I think will probably still start favourite here, Steve Mackey. Yes, he's uh, the most accomplished and certainly the best amateur bowler that has ever played in Australia. There are no Australian bowlers better than Pang Nebamaseno. And at 27 years of age, uh, bowling it for only 14 years, but probably at the top level for about 10 of those, we're set to see some fantastic action. And I guess he enjoys uh, film star status over in the Philippines. Yes, he's done very well out of his uh, World Cup wins. He has uh, received a university scholarship and a Mercedes-Benz car from the president of the Philippines, President Marcos, for his wins in that world championship uh, title in 1976 and 1980. And he uh, just won the International Amateur Championship, a new tournament in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago. But watch this ball. Have a look at this one turn. It's a violent ball. Everyone's been asking me all week if he's got a license to drive that truck here, and uh, certainly looking forward to a good match here. I don't think Bradford will be overawed by the situation all the same. There's a big difference between first and second prize money. And Yang uh, is uh, 27 years of age. He is a businessman in the Philippines and a very successful one after his recent international successes. And only two weeks ago, he took out the international championship in Las Vegas. Yes, it's a big ball. He really does nothing with it at all till he gets to the, uh, the last step and then it's all wrist, fingers and uh, just a gigantic hand that makes that ball turn so much. Still warm up balls here for two men. And both of them bowling with the black angle ball. The angle won this tournament last year when John Sullivan averaged 223 and beat Tom Curie on television. And now we have again. The same ball being bowled by two different bowlers. What a ball that is. We're going to see some pin action now. The rewards for Nepa Masano this afternoon will uh, give him, if he wins, the biggest amount of prizes ever won by a bowler in the history of the game here in Australia, Gordon. He'll uh, win the first prize in cash. He'll get a trip to America to bowl in the American Bowling Congress Masters next year in Toledo, Ohio. And he will also get a trip back here to Australia to defend his South Pacific Classic Championship next year. Nepa Messino already owns a pro shop in Manila and one of the big bowling centres there. He might be able to open up another one. He could probably open up a chain of them over there. He's uh, certainly well regarded and we've had very big crowds of uh, the Filipino community in Sydney here to watch him this week. One of their favourite sons. And they're going through the practice shots now, preparing for the biggest moment in both of their respective careers. Prize money in the Philippines is certainly nowhere near as high as on offer here in the South Pacific Classic. Uh, I understand that Prang's biggest first prize is about $2,000, so a big moment for him. Even though he's the most accomplished bowler, it won't be easy. And I'm sure President Marcos will have a little bonus standing by if he can come through here. Yes, it's been a big month for him. Uh, what a month August will be. He'll remember August 84 for a long time. First ball for Peng of the Philippines. Watch this one come up. Oh boy, I tell you, that ball's just lethal. It's a weapon. It should be banned. That's the general opinion anyway. Bradford won't be overawed by it, and the uh, big crowd here at Bankstown Bowl will be spurring him on to great heights, I'm sure. 426 in that match against Paul Madden, uh, that's possibly enough to win if he can do that again. And paying uh, one of the great Filipino athletes. He works on his game uh, and he works on his body. He does weights, he runs, jogs. Very fit 27-year-old. 
does nothing with the ball until the last couple of steps, and then have a look at it. What a bowler. What a strike. Have a look at this one come up. Those pins, three pounds five, and that uh, 35 pounds of wooden plastic just being treated like confetti. Will this be the fourth strike in a row? Not quite. He was lucky to get away with that one too. Bradford should just play his own game here. Aing set a, a tournament record yesterday with an average of 220 in the qualifying. He beat Joe Velo's eight-year-old mark of 215 for the qualifying rounds that uh, Joe set in Northcote Bowl in Melbourne in 1976. And he did it so easily. He needed uh, 313 for the last two games. And I think he had 470-odd. Peng took up bowling by accident. He was going to play golf, but it was raining. The family found a bowling house, and that's how it all started. Well, I tell you what, I bet uh, Jack Nicholas and uh, a few of the other golfers are happy that he did that because uh, I would think that Payeng could probably be a champion at just about anything he did. Ian Bradley not overawed. No, he's not, and uh, that's a strike for Bradford now. Giving him uh, a deficit of about eight or nine pins. He's bowling a good ball too. Of course, it's nothing as, as spectacular as Aings. He missed one of those the other day and the, the crowd couldn't believe it. He doesn't do much wrong. And uh, Paying, of course, hoping to uh, go back to Manila next week and win the Philippines qualifying for the World Cup and get another trip out here to represent his own country in the World Cup tournament. Bowling well, seems to be a series of qualifying tests. And you have to keep on producing the goods all the time. The moment you falter, someone else jumps in and takes the honours. Well, that was a good ball by Bradford, but that six pin will jumping around the ten. Tough break for Bradford. Does nothing with the ball and then whip. Watch this. And well, there's another ringing grab. That's going to be difficult for him, isn't it, with his uh, south core spin? Yes, it's a tough spare for him, uh, as is the 10 pin for Bradford, but Bradford uh, had that one covered all the way. That one hit the pin right in the belly. But uh, because. Uh, because Pang turns the ball a bit more, uh, it is a difficult one for him. He'll be shooting right across the lane for this. And right over to the far side of the lane. Oh, look at it hang on. If it didn't have quite so many revs, it would have fallen off halfway down, but no problems for the giant from the Philippines. Pang's wife, Pinky Nevermasano, is in Australia with him, uh, Pinky, an executive of the Coronado bowling chain over there. They have six or seven bowling centres throughout the Philippines. Very popular sport over there. And another ringing 10 for Bradford. Could have been a turkey for him, but not to be. 79 now. Plays a potential 88. Here it comes. Oh boy. Who'd want to be a bowling pin after that? You'd fall over when you saw it coming at you. Bradford picked up his spare. And uh, nine pins the difference now, paying ahead. Talking about bowling centres, there's a lot of new centres going up in Australia to cater for the people who want to play, particularly in country areas, but there's quite a few going up in the suburbs also. 120 bowling centres in Australia now, compared to 94 just two years ago. And I'd like to see that one again. Uh, that one should have been a strike for 100 years, but let's have a look what happens. I think the five pin will shoot, yes, straight in front of the nine. Tough break for Paying. Should have been a strike. And there's the World Cup logo belonging to Ian Bradford, who will join Cheryl Munson as the 
Asian Australian representatives and uh, that's the third 10 pin in a row. Obviously an adjustment required there. Wins the difference now. So it's a close match halfway through this first of two games. And Bradford couldn't get much better experience than bowling in the South Pacific Classic final against arguably the world's best amateur bowler, who uh, he could quite conceivably meet at Rush Gutter Bowl in uh, October. Let's see what happens now. Neither of them have been out of the pocket yet. They've bowled a very solid game so far for six frames. Let's see this one. Ooh, bad break. Post. And he's left them. Let's see this one. Went high. And that pin not quite uh, long enough to knock the 10 pin out of the way. Let's see what happens to Bradford now. He's got a little bit of pressure off him. And the fourth 10 pin in a row for Ian Bradford. Steve, have you ever seen anyone get this spare, the bedpost? Uh, I've never seen it, but uh, apparently it does happen. I think he's going to have to uh, slam into that 10 pin and hope that it bounces back, but uh, it didn't happen for him. That's about the only way to get it. There's a paying behind the ball. Of course, that was a possible spare then, but uh, not to be. And Bradford. If he can get another nine, will be the leader in this game and could be an upset. He's not happy with all these ten pins that he's leaving. That's four in a row, so he's certainly hanging around the pocket but needs to try something just a little different as he releases it to get rid of that corner pin. Yes, sir. And how do champions come back after splits? with strikes. You don't get much better than that. 135 with a strike working. Bradford can be 137 if he gets one now. He's in again. Yes, that's a better shot. Must have changed his angle into the pocket or something because that one never looked uh, in doubt. The ball coming up beautifully as it got near the pins as opposed to those few 10 pins. 137 now to 135 and the leader is the Australian. It's be a great thing for Ian Bradford to beat Paying in this tournament. But he's going to have to match strike for strike. We've seen Payne come back so often after a split with three or four strikes in a row, as if he says, take that, pins. He shouldn't have stood up on me before, and uh, he's a, a great producer. Bradford uh, very, very stiff in this game. Let's have a look at this one. He shock, shook the four pin, but uh, the nudge not quite enough. No problems with the spare. But he's going to be behind because of paying coming back with a double after the 7-10 split. Look at him. He wants another strike. He wants it badly. Maybe too badly. He seemed to pull that one as he let it go. Six pins ahead now for Paying. No. And uh, as is uh, the want of left handers, they all like to ride the ball when it goes near the pins and uh, paying a good rider of a, a good shot, but uh, not happy with that. And what a ball Bradford's produced when he needed it. Quite obliterated the pins. Lang seemed to let that one go a little short again, so. Uh, might be overturning the ball. 183 in the ninth frame for Neba Masano. To 177. Six pins ahead, but Bradford can win this first game and take a psychological lead going to the next game if he can get another strike. No. 
going to be behind. It would have been better for him if he'd been ahead, of course, and that's probably the only bad shot he's had in the whole game. Can he finish with a strike here? He certainly can. 203, well under his tournament average, but nothing to be sneezed at. And it's a lead. A lead by 196 to 203. Seven pins the difference. With a lot of money and prestige and uh, overseas trips and everything else riding on this next game for Ian Bradford. How will he react to the pressure of bowling against the world's best amateur? Seven pins behind. Nipper Messino, 203, plays 196. Yes, that was a pretty good game. In fact, Bradford, I thought, uh, bowled as well as or better than Nepa Masano. Uh, he had those four ten pins in a row, and then he rocked the four pin, and each of those could have been strikes, just like that one was. So Bradford uh, looking quite good, actually. And what an upset this would be, and uh, a great day uh, in Ian Bradford's life, and Australian bowling, if he could beat this Filipino machine. Seems so easy to him. 14 years he's been playing. He started when he was 13. I remember giving him a lesson when I was over in Manila on a, a trip. Uh, he was only just starting to bowl then, and uh, he looked good even in those early days. I think he could give everyone in Australia a few lessons now. But now we're with Bradford. Big crowd here egging him on. Hoping that this one's a strike. It is. Oh. I was going to say it is, but it's not. But it should have been. Let's have a look at this. Unbelievable. Almost said something on his behalf that time, but uh, there's a, a full count for Nepa Masano. We can thank his lucky stars that Bradford didn't get a double then. Three pound, five ounce pins, you wouldn't think they could be so cruel. Bradford will lose uh, a few more pins now. He'll be uh, possibly 17 behind. And look at the size of those hands, Steve. They are gigantic. Yes, I guess uh, paying uh, probably has a close to six inch span and uh, there's not too many in Australia around that. Look at that pin action. What a cave in. And have a look at this one. Crash, crash, crash. Off they go. Into the pits. And a great comeback by Bradford who should have had three in a row also. But that seven pin stood in the way. But a good match here. And Bradford pulling the string. Doesn't show as much emotion as Paying does. But he feels it just the same, I, I'm sure. Perfect scorecard at the moment for Paying. And a ringing seven. We won't see any 300s in our South Pacific Classic again. I guess if anyone could have ever had one, it was this man who rarely misses the pocket. Let's see if Brad kept him, Bradford can close the gap. He's moved deeper inside. And look at those pins just taunting him, driving him mad. Four pin this time. Will be 60 in the third with a spare. Nice uh, side view of Paying. 79 in the third for Paying. 60 for his opponent. 19 the difference in this game and now 26 overall. Can Bradford cause an upset and come through? He could have had a four bagger there and he would have been the leader, but he's doing the best he can. Trying to G himself up for a big effort. That's ominous. Oh, a nose hit. 
But when the ball's turning that much, I guess uh, there's 15 or 20 revs. He knew it was high. He knew it was gone. Look at the face. But uh, the dance did it all. Kicked the pins over. 99 in the fourth. Oh, go over. Yes. He deserved that one. Still 26 the difference in the fourth frame. What do you think of that one, Gordon? That was a great morale booster for Ian Bradford. He badly needed that one. Yes, let's have a look at it go. Just went. It just went. Will it? It did that time too. Bradford now first firing quite freely. Uh, the pressure of the situation. He's uh, looking good though, he's done nothing wrong in these couple of games. Been very unlucky. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, he deserved a strike even though it was a pulled shot. Would have been uh, just desserts if he'd carried that one because Paying went uh, high last time and blew the pins away. Coming back. Ooh, there's a turn up. We don't see too many of those, and uh, Paying uh, amazed. He knew he got out of it uh, just a little bit quickly. We might be able to have a look at uh, that split of Paying's. Obviously, Nepa Masano got out of it. Strangely. Let's see if he can get out of this one. Ball lift at the end. Ball spinning away uh, and he uh, played it safe. He can afford to. But that's cut his lead down considerably. A lot of pressure on Paying even though he's the world's best amateur. Might be a new fad there too, a personalised bowling towel. Not a good idea. Bradford. He's probably soaked in a bit of ether, I think. Keep him breathing. Yes, he couldn't have uh, tried harder to get another strike. Oh, look at these pins. Poor old Bradford. He's doing everything right, but he's not cashing. But he's closed the gap. 15 pins behind now. And I'm very uh, pleased that he's uh, stayed so close to Paying, who um, seems to be suffering a little. Could be getting to him. Bradford had a 242 in his first game of two game match against Paul Madden and had a series of 426. He had 196 in this first game against Paying and he's been right around the pocket the whole time. He just needs a little bit of uh, good fortune going his way with those late pins falling over and he could cause probably the upset of the decade here at Bankstown this afternoon. What a feather in his cap. He can come through in the next five deliveries with five strikes. He'd have to be a chance to win. Certainly a much improved bowler over the uh, two years ago when he won this tournament. Looks good. No four pin again. Well, he was plagued with ten pins in the first game. Now the four pin, his nemesis. Come on. Unbelievable. 138 to perhaps 147. If this man can get another strike. Oh, that ball was a, a ripper. Still 15 pins the difference in the seventh frame. 146 to 138 by Bradford. Bradford's got his spare. Paying going for the difficult seven pin in the corner. He'll have to take a little bit of care with this one. Under pressure, it's easy to have the ball 
slip off the fingers. And he is taking a little extra care with it. Just firing freely. He's got it. <laughs> Running out of frames. We're in the ninth frame now. Both with spares working in the eighth. I don't think that ball turned as much. He might have eased off on a little bit. Sent it down a bit straighter. This could be the last chance for Ian Bradford. He's trailing. But a strike will keep his hopes alive. And the spectators know it too. They're all hoping for him. They're all praying for Ian Bradford to come through with a strike. He deserves one. Yeah. He did deserve that one. <laughs> Thought about it, got up there and did it. And uh, great effort in the ninth frame. And he's still in it. Paying can't afford to make any mistakes now. The pressure's back on him. Yes, and he hasn't looked too good in the last couple of... Uh, times on this lane. He's gone high and then he's left a, a split. See what happens this time. That's high again. Oh, and he broke them up. But only just. 165 and bang. Oh. Doing the acrobatic uh, dance there. The spectators riding it with him. 14 pins behind is Ian Bradford. Bang falling into this match. He's uh, gone bad in the last couple of frames. Pulling the ball high. Can he hold it all together? Well, he's got to, and uh, if he does, he wins uh, $3,700 and two overseas trips, riding on whatever Ian Bradford can do right now. Bradford can win. He's got to go all the way. Tension building at Bankstown Bowl and uh, a thousand people here now hoping that Ian Bradford can produce the goods. He's taking extra care. Maybe he doesn't take too long. He's taking a lot of time. It's got to be a strike. He needs a strike. It's got to be a strike. Unbelievable. That's how close he may have come to winning the South Pacific Classic. For the second time, let's have a look at this five pin shoot across the front of the seven. Have a look at this nuisance of a five pin. It hit the, uh, the belly of the seven, but uh, not enough to knock it over. And have a look at Bradford's face. I'm sure it'll show absolute disappointment and the spectators as well. Well, Bangs has to stay clean. This can clinch it for him. He's got to stay clean. Ooh, he got it! That may well be the clincher. And what a great reaction there by Peng Nepomuceno. A strike in the 10th frame to win the South Pacific Classic, the first overseas bowler ever to win the tournament. But what a great match. Have a look at the winning strike. Oh, that pin had string on it and have a look at the reaction you beauty let's see if he can clean it up now and get another one i bet this one's no. well he surprised me that's the first time i've seen him miss the head pin uh, all weekend and a very relieved man he's paying and what a fantastic performance Ian Bradford's put up. I tell you, it's one of the best two games I've ever seen that uh, didn't produce what it could have. 393 for two games. Ian Bradford, runner-up in the South Pacific Classic after winning the tournament in 1982, but he's the Australian representative at Rush Cutter Bowl. And here's the winner. The world's best amateur bowler, Ian Nepomuceno, wins the South Pacific Classic. First prize of $3,700 too. And he'll be back next year to defend his championship here. And there's Bradford score, 197 to 205. 15 pins the difference. He's getting a standing ovation. He thoroughly deserves it. And I'll tell you what, you can expect a big crowd at the Manila Airport too when he returns home. It certainly will be.
gallant loser, Ian Bradford. Convincing winner over, over Paul Madden in the semi-final. And he went so close to winning his second South Pacific Classic. Yes, he certainly did. And uh, the uh, Philippines ambassador, Consul General Valderrama, offering congratulations there. He's been looking after Paying's entourage this week. And uh, everyone very, very pleased with the performance. First overseas bowler to win the tournament. The Hong Kong representative, third place. Winners can smile. So, the 20th TAA International South Pacific Classic goes to the first Filipino to win a world crown in any athletic competition, Paeng Nepomuceno, the 27-year-old from Manila. He takes out the 1984 Classic. Oh, Piang Nepomuceno is going to receive the South Pacific Classic trophy. I think he'll be warmly received when he returns. He's a national hero back in the Philippines. And he wins this year's classic televised nationally by ABC Sport. Here comes the celebrated trophy. A very deserving winner, Peng Nepo Maseno from the Philippines.